All right, so the next thing that we have to do is find the true heading. And that is found using the wind correction angle um, that you got from the E6B earlier. Um, if that wind correction angle was to the left of the center line on the E6B, then you would subtract it from true course. If it was to the right, then you would add it to true course. So if the true course was 180, and the wind correction angle was five degrees to the left, then your true heading would be 175. Now we are going to move over to the sectional to look at how to find variation. All right, to find variation, you have to use the vertical purple lines that are up and down the sectional. If you are going from Devil's Lake to Grand Forks, each checkpoint will have a different variation depending on which purple line you're closest to. So since you're starting in Devil's Lake, the variation, it's closest to this line, and this line is five degrees east. So on the nav log, you would put five degrees into the variation spot. And then each checkpoint you would measure, or you would figure out um, which purple line it's closest to. So if I was over in Lakota right here, it'd still be closest to this five degree east line because the one right next to Devil's Lake is five degrees and the one right next to Grand Forks is four degrees. So then you would keep moving towards Grand Forks and as soon as you got beyond halfway between these two, the, the two purple lines that we see on the map, um, then those checkpoints would, would start using the four degree one, which is right next to Grand Forks. So let's say the first checkpoint is Devil's Lake, so the variation is going to be five degrees because it's closest to that line. So I'm going to move back to the nav log. Now that we're back at the nav log, the variation we found was five, so I'm going to put five in here. And it was five degrees east according to the line. And you can find that that number towards the top and bottom of each sectional. So it was five degrees east, so we subtract it from true heading. So magnetic heading is going to be 170. And then deviation is really easy because it's always zero um, when we're doing this in class. So it's always zero. So course heading is going to be the same as magnetic heading at 170. Um, so true course and wind correction angle, as long as the weather is the same, um, they're going to be the same for the whole flight. And then so is true heading, but after variation, because that changes during the flight. So that would, that would change as you go down. All right, and then for leg and remaining for the distance, that's found using the distance between each leg. So from, let's say you were going from K-Biz, which is Bismarck, down to Grand Forks. Obviously, there's going to be more checkpoints than two, um, but I'm just going to put it here so it's all visible. Let's say you have a checkpoint where there's a river. intersecting a road. And let's say it was 11 miles from Bismarck, the Bismarck Airport. So for leg you would put um, 11 miles and then for remaining you would subtract 11 from the original distance. So let's say the original distance was 100, even though it's not, let's just say it is. Then you would put 89 in the box here. So that's the remaining. And then let's say there was another one uh, where there's a railroad track. Railroad, and then it intersects a road. 10 miles. 
So then you would subtract 10 from the 89 to get 79. And then you would just continue to do that for the whole trip until you get to zero. All right, so now for estimated ground speed. Um, that is found using the E6B, and you guys know how to do that, so I'm not going to go over that. Um, so let's say our estimated ground speed was 115. For the actual ground speed, we're going to go over that later. Um, that's a little different on how you find that. Um, all right, now let's say our time off was at noon. ETE, or estimated time and route, is also found using the E6B, and you're basically dividing ground speed by distance. Um, and then you plug that time into the ETE. Um, ATE, uh, again, we're going to go over later, as well as ATA, which are the actuals. All right, now for ETA, which is estimated time of arrival, you take the time that you took off and add the estimated time and route. So let's say the estimated time and route was five minutes. You would arrive at 12.05. And then actual times, we don't know yet. We'll find that out later during the flight. Um, and then let's just do another one just to practice. Uh, let's say the estimated time and route between the the river road intersection and the railroad and road intersection is six minutes. Then you would say 12, 11. Close enough. All right, now we are going to go over fuel. Um, total fuel um, is usually 50 gallons. Um, gallons per hour, that's given by your instructor. Um, so let's just say it was seven, just to make it easy. All right, so the fuel box is going to be how much fuel you burn per leg, and that's found using the E6B again. Um, you take your gallons per hour and multiply it by your uh, estimated time and route. So it'll be gallons per hour times time. And that's how you get fuel. And then remaining fuel, you just subtract the fuel from 50 gallons, or the one before it. So let's say your fuel you burnt was uh, 0.9, close enough. You get 49.1. And then let's say you burn one gallon on the next leg then you would get 48.1. And that's how you find fuel. Next we will be going over what you find in the airport directory book, and, that's, and that is down here.